Now we will see the distinction between metals, insulators and semiconductors on the basis of band theory. Let us consider a particular energy band which is filled up to some level. Let this is filled up to level K1. This is minus K1 and this is plus K1. So this energy band is filled up to K1 point. As far as the influence of electric field is concerned, we are interested in knowing, we are interested in determining the number of effective free electrons. in the band now the number of effective free electrons in the band is given by n effective and that is equal to summation fk what is fk fk is determined from the effective mass concept and that is given by fk equal to m upon m star where m star is effective mass and this is given by m upon h cut square into d2e upon dk square. This factor gives the measure or extent up to which the electron is free in a given state. Electron is free in a k state. Okay. Here summation extends over the all occupied states, energy states in a band. Okay, let L be the length of the lattice. and the number of possible energy states or states simply in a particular band in interval dk in interval dk is given by dn equal to l upon 2 pi into dk. This is explained in my previous lecture on number of possible wave functions in a band. Now since we know that uh, the according to Pauli exclusion principle each state can have two electrons. So right hand side of this equation will be multiplied by factor 2. Now the number of effective free electrons is given by n effective equal to integration dn into fk and this is equal to for the value of dn from here and we will multiply by factor 2 according to Pauli exclusion principle. So this is 2 into L upon 2 pi integration minus k1 to plus k1 because the band is filled up to level k1. So this is minus k1 to plus k1 and uh, fk dk. Okay, now the put the value of this fk from equation 1. We have n effective equal to this 2 and 2 cancel L upon pi minus k1 to k1 m upon h cut square d2e upon dk square into dk okay and this will be equal to this m and h cut square these are constant so we have m l upon pi 
एच कट स्क्वेर एंड दिस लिमिट इज फ्रॉम माइनस के वन टू प्लस के वन ओके सो इफ यू कन्वर्ट द लिमिट फ्रॉम जीरो टू के वन देन वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय टू फ्रॉम द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन ओके सो वी हैव डी टू ई अपॉन डी के स्क्वेर इन टू डी के ओके नाउ फ्रॉम हेयर we get 2 ml upon pi h cut square and its integration is de by dk at k equal to k1 so we have n effective equal to 2 ml upon pi h cut square d by dk at k equal to k1 where k equal to plus minus n pi by a and n equal to 1 2 3 and so on we know at k equal to plus minus n pi by a de by dk equal to 0 at these values we get the discontinuities in e versus k diagram at plus minus pi by a plus minus 2 pi by a and so on okay now if the slope of this e versus k diagram is zero then number of effective free electrons will be zero n effective will be equal to zero and number of free electrons effective free electrons will be maximum at the point of inflection suppose k not is the point of inflection then at k not de by dk at k equal to k not will be maximum slope will be maximum at k equal to k not at point of inflection so the number of free electrons effective free electrons will be maximum if the band is filled up to point of inflection point of inflections in the case of insulators n effective equal to 0 there are no free electrons in insulators all the levels are filled up to valence band or you can say this valence band band is completely filled and this conduction band is totally empty okay and the gap this is called forbidden gap forbidden gap forbidden energy gap this forbidden gap in case of insulator is very high this is almost impossible for the electrons in valence band to jump into conduction band so the excitation of electron from valence band to conduction band is totally impossible uh, for diamond diamond is insulator this forbidden gap is around 6 electron volt now second case is semiconductors semiconductor few electrons will be available in this conduction band okay so uh, this forbidden gap this gap is very small in silicon it is around 1.1 electron volt it is very small forbidden gap and uh, there will be possibility that electron will gain energy and jump to conduction band in this case the conductivity is much smaller than in case of metals in metals this valence band and conduction band these are overlapping 
okay there is no gap between no forbidden gap between conduction band and valence band so electrons are easily available in conduction band so there are large number of free electron in conduction band and conductivity will be very high and due to this overlapping large number of electrons are available in conduction band and that is independent of temperature in semiconductors even at room temperature there will be few electrons in conduction band okay because this energy gap is very small and electron may get some thermal energy from temperature and will jump to this conduction band so there will be conductivity of a semiconductor lies between metals and insulators this uh, conductivity of semiconductor will be very less as compared to metals okay metals are good conductor of electricity but the conductivity of semiconductor will be higher than insulators as the gap is very small in case of insulators this gap is very large very high so electron in valence band are not able to jump to conduction band due to this high gap very large gap okay so this was distinction between metals insulators and semiconductors on the basis of band theory thank you